Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, Benjamin Lindsay here, Managing Editor at Backstage. Uh, if you're joining us today, we are sitting with Oliver Jackson Cohen, who's starring in the new season of The Haunting of Bly Manor on Netflix. It's kind of the follow-up second season to the anthological series, The Haunting of Hill House. Um, huge hit on Netflix. I don't know if you've seen the first season. Uh, really scared the hell out of me, I, 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 just to speak to my own experience of it. So very excited for this new Bly Manor installment and uh, to be speaking with Oliver. And I believe he's calling in from uh, across the Atlantic. So I will give him a minute to join us here and then we can get the show on the road. You what? Hey there. Yes, hey. it works. <laughs> How's it going? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. Um, I'm Ben from Backstage, it's nice to meet you. I'm Ollie, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, thanks for finding the time to chat. No. Um, we're very excited for this new season of uh, By Manor. And of course, you've had a big year with Invisible Man and uh, just staying busy through all this. Uh, <laughs> How have you been holding up these last few months, though? It's pretty, pretty incredible. I mean, time. It, it is. I feel like, you know, the whole world is, is, is feeling it. It's, uh, I just think it's just been the strangest, one of the strangest times we've kind of ever experienced, really. So, I mean, I'm, I'm fine, you know. It's, I think we're just all just trying to not get it and not spread it and, and all of that stuff. But, um, yeah. yeah, what have you been up to? Um, I mean, we've been staying here or staying busy here. We're, we are working remotely, working from home. I'm actually at my folks' place in upstate New York right now, just for the long weekend. Very um, nice. So, do, doing what we can to stay of uh, of mental and physical health, hold the ones that you care about close, and uh, take care of yourself. That's all you can do. Exactly. Yeah. Um, exactly. Well, uh, it's my understanding you're. Wh where are you calling in from today? Are you in Greece? <laughs> I'm in Greece. I can show you actually where I am. This is this is what I can see. Uh, wait, can I flip this? I think so. Yeah, there, there That's we go. What I can see. That is quite the view. <laughs> However, I'm in quarantine, so okay, I haven't been allowed outside. Uh, <laughs> this is my. And I get. I got here on Sunday, so this is my fifth day of it. So I've got another. Um, nine days so, so <laughs> in other words, we, we caught you when your schedule is packed you're super busy doing exactly <laughs> yeah well exactly. Uh, are, are you over there for work i am yeah i'm here shooting a movie well we haven't started yet but um we start uh when did we start a week on monday something like okay. that or well, they i think they start no they start next week and then i join a week on monday Got it, got it. Well, it's, it's good that things are slowly getting back up and running. Yeah, I mean, it's just crazy, though. I mean, I feel like so many productions have started back up and, you know, the, the COVID measures are, are insane. And, you know, I, it's, it's just, it's, I, it's, it's so impressive that, that people are able to kind of navigate this and work around it and work with it. And it's, it's just, I, I, I wouldn't want to be like, an AD right now doing a schedule because I mean, yeah. contingency plans must be insane. Is this your first time back on set? It is, yeah. So I, I, we wrapped Bly Manor. Uh, when was it? In February, late February, and then I did a. I had to go on the Invisible Man sort of press tour, and then I went back to Bly to finish off a couple of days, and then got back to London, and um, and like a week later, lockdown happened. Wow. So I just sat in my house. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, it's a good thing you got back to London when you did. You would have been. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I could have been in Vancouver just living in Bly Manor for the whole of lockdown. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know if, uh, just based on the title, The Haunting, I don't know if you want to be stuck in Bly Manor. <laughs> but uh, we, are, we are really excited for this new season. What can you tell oh, us cool. about it and your character, Peter? Um, well, I think it's a, it's a very, uh, it's a di very different uh, story. Um, it's based on sort of Henry, sort of an homage to Henry James and mm. uh, the tone of the screw and a couple of other of his ghost stories. And it's a very kind of different direction uh, than Hill House was, you know, Hill House dealt with, you know, centered around a family. This is a story about strangers coming together and forming a family. And uh, it's fundamentally the shows about love, which is quite an odd thing to kind of explore in in horror but mike is so clever mike flanagan who, who created mm. 
those. Um, and so he's found the way to kind of explore all the darker sides of love and what that does. And similar to the first season, the idea of ghosts and how ghosts don't have to be these kind of spectral things. They are things in our lives that follow us and, uh, and uh, things that have been printed, that have been an imprint on our life. And, uh, um, and he's done that in a way, but, but made it about love. So mm. I say Peter Quint, who is, uh, he's, he's, it's quite hard to kind of talk about without giving away too many spoilers, but he Sorry. is, uh, he works at Bly Manor and um, is a very, very, very complicated man. <laughs> Not too so similar to Luke Crane. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, he's technically, I guess, the villain of the piece. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, Mike and all of his kind of genius, we've obviously found a way to dig in deeper with him and to, you know, find out what, what, why he behaves the way he behaves and, and what it is about him that has um, created this sort of monster in a way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I love what you say here about this season being about love in a way. Um, I feel mm. like horror is at its best when you can find those allegorical connections, whether it be the mm. ghost of the events, the dark events that's imprinting themselves on yeah. you. Yeah. Um, is, is that between these two series, between The Invisible Man, is that one way that you find your way into this genre work, kind of tapping into what the, the humanity of it, I guess, for lack of well, a better I think, word? Well, I think you have to. I mean, yeah. I think, you know, as an actor, you can't, um, you you have to kind of find the humanity in it and um and it's very interesting you know we've been doing so many interviews recently for um for blind manor and a lot of people have asked me you know well you obviously love horror and it's not necessarily that i that i love horror i just think that in these in hill house in invisible man in blind manor they are really uh really interesting characters and um and interesting stories uh to tell <laughs> and i think that that is what is quite powerful about the genre is that and specifically when you get someone clever like mike doing it that you can explore all these really really interesting themes and you can with hill house you know it was about mental illness and it was about uh addiction and it was mm -hmm. about depression all of these different things that you were able to explore and explore as an actor and it make it sort of palatable to an audience so yeah. I've found specifically in the past sort of couple of years that um, it's not necessarily been about the genre and wanting to do horror, but just there are some really fascinating characters to play in there with, with huge amounts of complexity um, that you're not necessarily afforded elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, we, we here at Backstage, our, our audience today, in addition to fans of yours, uh, we are the working actors, the creators of the world. Um, so I'd love to get a peek into what kind of that process looks like in character building. Um, what, what is what is kind of the first step you take when you're given a script for the day and uh, need to get need to get something in your bones as a performer? Um, I think it's probably um, finding what it is uh, that resonates within me. Um, mm. I think I think the idea of playing a part uh, is something that I find quite strange. Uh, I think that it always has to come from somewhere in you. So it's this, I uh, feel that that's kind of the first step is finding how to kind of tap in to, to something and then make it your own. Mm -hmm. um, and I know with, with, with Bly Manor, for example, you know, Peter on the page was, was the idea of Peter was very, very different to what I ended up kind of bringing to it. And I kept on saying to Mike, you know, we, it would be more interesting or more human if we explored this part. I understand that that's sort of tried to push story, but so it's all about, uh, for me, it's all about figuring out how to make it my own and how to, uh, yeah, just how to how to wh how I can use my stuff and, yeah. and 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 sort of express it through the character in a way. Has that been th that dialogue process with Mike? Is is that something that you've always been comfortable as a performer, kind of uh, relaying? No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I feel like you know the first the first five years of my career, I well probably longer actually, I um. 
I just said, yep, whatever you want. I'll right. do whatever you want. I'll be whatever you need me to be. And it's quite interesting in a way because I was actually talking about this the other day about, you know, I started doing this when I was 20 and um, have done some very questionable projects in the past. And um, it's, it's interesting because I just, at the beginning, I was just sort of doing what I was told and mm. uh, doing what I thought people wanted me to do or wanted of me. And uh, I think something changes when you, when you start to, to, to go, well, hold on a minute. What, like, where does this lie within me? What can I bring? And maybe I'm not the right person for it. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm, uh, and it, there has to be this kind of click within you uh, to, to know that you can be of service to the story or service to the character. And so that, um, that took a lot, of, a lot of work. But yeah. no, at the beginning, it's, I, was, I was always, I mean, even on Hill House, you know, I, I, feel, that it, I feel it's important to, to defend something that you really, uh, truly believe and think is right for a character. But, but ultimately, you know, you, you'll just get fired. So I was so worried of just getting fired. So I'd be like that. Right. I'll do what you want. Um, <laughs> but I think over time you build up a certain amount of confidence of, of trusting, uh, not that you know better, but, but, but what, uh, what you feel is, is going to be a choice and maybe it's not their uh, desired choice, but it will resonate honestly in a way for you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you bring that, uh, that energy to the audition room as well. I imagine that you find yourself wanting to make those kind of individual choices. Yeah, I think I think that's that's uh, there's a guy that I still work with uh, called Michael Lugio, who's an incredible um, teacher out of New York, and he was one of the first people that sort of introduced this idea to me of you don't have to be what other people want. Mm -hmm you and and if it's written regardless of where the script is i mean regardless of what the character is do what you do because you're different to the next person and do what you do and don't try and do what you think it should be um and so i've definitely had auditions and even jobs where i mean even the one i'm doing at the moment the character was originally written as like a 45 year old balding like dude from the bronx okay and, so now um, actually <laughs> <laughs> and um and and i sort of went in and went well this is what i would do mm -hmm. um so so i think i think it there is something as actors i think it's really important to kind of to 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 do what you do uh sorry this all sounds really corny but but to 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 just do what comes from you in mm -hmm. a way and mm -hmm. uh, and because it will be different and it will be it may not be what they want, but at least it'll be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it'll be honest. You, you can leave the room knowing that what you did was... Uh, yeah, just... I mean, it's, yeah, it's maybe it was batshit crazy, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, in, in terms of that, uh, I imagine that uh, every actor's success rate is kind of hit or miss in the audition room. Do you have an audition horror story that you could share with us? So many. <laughs> I mean, so many. I'm terrible at audit. Well, yeah, I no, I'm terrible at auditions, and I have to do this thing where I keep on telling myself I'm not. Um, but I just, I find the whole process so strange, and uh, it's not a natural or comfortable experience. Right. Uh, and you're sort of asked a lot of the time. I just, I, I have this thing that, that with acting is sort of you, you know, you. It's that basic stuff of you you listen and you respond. And so it's a, it's a sort of ping pong match that goes on. Mm -hmm. And if the reader is sort of doing this, you know, and not looking, at, like I, I find it so weird because it then becomes a sort of fake performance that you're doing. Right, that takes but, you um, up, really. Yeah. So um, if whenever I have the option, I go, I'll take, thank you, I'll, I'll <laughs> take, and then I'll, and then I'll go and meet them to have a chat, but I'll take. Yeah. Um, but um, I think the biggest thing is just breathe. That's my other, my other thing is just breathe and and accept that they are the weirdest circumstances and uh, and that you'll just do your best, you know. Because I think anyone that is, you know, brave or well, I mean, however you want to look at it, brave or stupid enough to kind of do this job, um, <laughs> you 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 have to kind of just, I don't know, you just go in and you sort of do your best, I guess. 
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it, it, it's kind of the perfect blend of bravery and stupidity, maybe. <laughs> it, really, it really is. I, yeah. I, often, I often feel like it's more teetering on stupidity on my part. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, it's working out so far, to say the least. <laughs> Just a couple more questions for you then. I, I also like capping these interviews off with the advice that you would give your younger self when you first got Oof. Uh, don't worry as much. And um, I, would, uh, I would say, again, just breathe. You're all right. And, and to sort of trust, trust yourself, I guess. I, I spent a very, very long time, and still, um, doubting every kind of thought or every kind of instinct I had or, or anything like that. Uh, and so I think just sort of trust yourself and to breathe, I guess. Yeah, no, that, that, that definitely tracks, that tracks. Well, <laughs> I'm really excited to see you back on the small screen with Bly Manor. Um, everyone mm -hmm. watching, of course, out on Netflix on October 9th. Um, Oliver, thanks for joining us. And, no, uh, thanks for having me. Take care of yourself while, uh, while in quarantine and isolation. Thank you very much. But uh, we'll, we'll be in touch. We'll see you next time. All right. Nice Bye. to see you, mate. Take care. Bye.